Ready? Yep. Holy crap! <laughs> I bought a 5th gen VFR, but is it as good as everyone says? See, some bikes are truly good, just great. And then some are good for what they are. I tend to get lost in that last category. The promise of an all-rounder is like a siren song that calls to me at some weird brainstem kind of level. It's why I ended up with a Suzuki SV650, a Suzuki SV1000, a BMW R1150GS, a Yamaha XSR900 Anniversary, a Ducati Desert Sled. Do you see a theme here? None of these are pure bikes. There's no super sport. There's no touring bike. There's no dedicated dirt bike off-roader. They're all good for what they are, but are they truly good? And is this VFR just another good-for-what-it-is kind of bike? This is the beginning of the story that'll help me figure out whether this bike, equal parts racetrack heritage and street bike comfort, can truly be great. I'm going to take some time with it. I'm going to ride it on the street. I'm going to ride it in the rain. I'm going to ride it at the track, in the canyons, on the highway. I want to understand whether the enthusiast vote was cast for the VFR out of passion or out of practicality. So far, I've only ridden a few hundred miles since I picked it up, but it has been through the gale force winds of the Palm Desert, through the snarls of LA's most infamous freeways, and then up roughly 50% of the California coast on the Pacific Coast Highway, Highway 1. Which sounds idyllic, but it was in one of the worst rainstorms I've ever experienced on or off a motorcycle. Well, it's not enough to know anything yet, but it seems a pretty strong start. And I guess that's where this part of the story will begin. In the middle, really. See, the bike has 41,000 miles already. It's just old enough to drink, but somehow seems like it's been part of the cigar and whiskey set for some time already. Something about the perfection of the paint, the denuding of decals, the relative lack of billet bling and anodized animalism seems to indicate that this is a bike that spent the majority of its miles cozying up to an aero-stitch road crafter, not helmet horns and shorts and flip-flops. It even came with a record of all of its services, a real physical paper and pen booklet, an elegant logbook for a more civilized day. The owner from whom I bought it dropped it in the driveway, scuffing the clutch cover and his ego, but like a good true VFR owner, he already had a new OEM cover and the gasket at the ready to repair both items upon sale of the bike. Every single fastener in the front fork assembly was fastidiously fettled and reassembled with aircraft precision, each bolt torqued and striped to prove its worthiness against the rigors of the road and the passage of time. No exaggeration and no accident there. I bought it from a professional airplane mechanic. Again, does it get more VFR than that? The few mods that were on show were the only real indicators of the passage of time and likely a result of a few more driveway dumps and tip-overs, Buick grips, billet levers, and a carbon can that actually looks and sounds great, but seems a little too oh brother and absent father for a classic like this one. But the test ride was... well, it was perfect. Instant startup and a strong idle. Crisp, slightly abrupt, but then incredibly smooth and progressive throttle action. The linked brakes only made themselves known because the rear pedal firms up a little bit when the front lever is engaged. The head bearings seemed round, the damping at both ends was smooth and controlled. This bike actually worked as good as it looked. So money changed hands, and all that remained was the ride up the western coast of the United States, two lanes of the most scenic set of gentle twisties that plate tectonics can produce. Well, I guess that's not really all that remained. My Buddy on this bike-buying caper still had to pick up his new bike. Another Honda Classic, to be sure, but this time, no all-rounder. 
On our ride up the coast, we were like fraternal twins on a W's worth of two V's with nary a cam chain between us, two amazing machines sending gear wine and Honda racing pedigree echoing across the seawall as our six collective cylinders alternately pounded and wailed and we giggled in our helmets passing each other back and forth just to hear the noises of nostalgia, the very real sound of history and heritage playing out across our 30-year friendship and across our two amazing machines. For a while, it was glorious. But no brilliance can exist without darkness to shine against. What was just moments before scenic turned into full-on night terror scary. Those gentle twisties became a constant cliffside landslide, peppering us with falling rocks and littering the lanes with invisible slimy mud holes that threatened to end our near-perfect paint and plastics at every turn. 200 miles of this deluge, 200 miles of some of the worst riding I've ever experienced ended with, well, nothing. Both, both bikes worked fine. But it was only when I got off the VFR, my gear totally soaked through to the bone, my visor so badly fogged that I hadn't been able to close it in about 75 miles of riding through pelting drips of frozen pain on my face. It was only then that I remarked at how little my back hurt, how little my wrists hurt or my arms ached, how fresh my mind still was despite the fear of that storm. Had this VFR spared me the sport bike sprains and pains I'd expected? Six hours in the saddle with no lunch and the worst road conditions ever foisted upon man and I was fine? Fine in this case is a whole lot better than fine. It's fantastic. A solid start to be sure. Subscribe to follow along as I learn more about this and a few other potentially incredible motorcycles. And try to decide whether this VFR is a bike of passion or a bike of practicality.